In this session, I will introduce how to use Cluster API, Metacube, and uh, Cluster Scaler to upscale on-premise Belmetto Kubernetes clusters. Um, this, <laughs> the contents of this presentation are uh, pretty uh, repeated with the previous one, so you know. Okay, my name is Shu Kun. I work for Fujitsu and currently focus on Belmetto provisioning uh, on Kubernetes and uh, today's contents. First is some background, uh, and then I will introduce uh, how the three projects work, uh, how to use them, and finally show you a demo. Okay, the background. Uh, nowadays, we still need um, premise for some reasons, like uh, need for full control of the entire, uh, entire environment, or need for some specific uh, level of security and uh, privacy, or maybe the compliance requirement. Uh, but we all know that managing an on-premise uh, on environment can be very tedious because we need to do everything by ourselves. So how could we reduce the operation cost. And uh, as here we are at Kubernetes Day, the solution I want to introduce today is a Kubernetes way, uh, combining cluster API, uh, MetaCubed IO, and uh, cluster scaler to automatically create and manage Kubernetes clusters, which are provisioned by uh, Biometa servers. So Kubernetes, we, um, uh, we are all very familiar with, is a great tool for deploying applications and uh, the rest three projects are um, can be used to manage the uh, infrastructure the first is cluster api it extends the kubernetes api to create and manage the kubernetes clusters and uh, it is a kubernetes community sub project created by c cluster lifecycle it also runs on kubernetes cluster and uh, that cluster is called a management cluster uh, the cluster is created by and managed by cluster API is called a workload cluster then. And uh, the infrastructure can be a cloud or bare metal. Uh, but no matter what infra uh, infrastructure is used, uh, there must exist an inf infrastructure provider component that provisions machines and networks for our clusters. And for bare metal, uh, Metacube Dio can be that provider. Uh, it is a biometric provisioning tool for Kubernetes. Uh, with it, we can install OS to a biometric server in the Kubernetes way. And the last one is cluster <coughs> or scaler, which adjusts the size of a cluster of a cluster uh, according to the workload. And uh, using with cluster API, it watches a, a workload cluster and uh, send a, re a scale request to cluster API when necessary. And combine the, the three projects, we can automatically create, uh, manage, and scale a Biometo Kubernetes clusters. Okay. Now, before talking about the details of the three uh, projects, there is a little bit uh, background knowledge, or, um, although I believe that everyone is very familiar with, which is uh, the way uh, in which Kubernetes works. Uh, okay. Kubernetes uses objects to describe the state of the system and controllers to uh, watch those objects and uh, make the desired state happen. So this is the fundamental mechanism of Kubernetes. And uh, we also know that Kubernetes provides an easy way to extend its API, which is CRD, the custom resource definition. With CRD, uh, Kubernetes can understand a new kinds of objects and then uh, combine with custom controllers to control those new objects. Uh, we can make Kubernetes do uh, what we want. So the projects that we are talking about today also use this mechanism. And okay, with uh, keeping this in mind, let's go further about how the three projects work. The first is cluster API. Again, Cluster API extends Kubernetes API to create and uh, uh, manage a Kubernetes cluster. And uh, to do this job, Cluster API first defines two new CRDs, uh, the cluster and the machine. The cluster, which represents a workload cluster, and the machine represents an infrastructure component hosting a Kubernetes node. Uh, 
And that component can be a virtual machine, bare metal, or even a container, which works like a machine. With these two objects, we can describe the basic state of our cluster. And next, we need some controllers to watch these objects and request resources from infrastructure and boot machines into Kubernetes nodes. And to decouple from infrastructure-specific logic, the cluster API uses the idea of provider. There are three providers defined here. Uh, infrastructure provider, control plan provider, and bootstrap provider. The infrastructure provider is responsible for requesting resources from infrastructure. And MetaCube.io is an infrastructure provider. And the bootstrap provider provides data to a machine for bootstrapping it into a Kubernetes node. And the control plan provider is used to create a control plan for our uh, cluster. Now, each uh, provider needs to define some CRDs and implement related controllers so that uh, the cluster and the machine object just need to interact with the, those, uh, infrastructure, uh, those provider CRDs and do not need to worry about any detail of uh, provider-specific logic. So by the way, the <coughs> a blue arrow in the image here means uh, reference referring to another object, and the black one uh, means the creating or modifying an object. The cluster uh, object contains the inter-cluster network configuration, like port cider or service cider, and also references to the infrastructure, uh, cluster, and the control plan objects. And then the infrastructure cluster object contains information about the infrastructure network uh, which the cluster runs on, and also some other configuration for our cluster. And uh, uh, here, the example here I used is uh, uh, very specific to MetaCube.io. And the control plan uh, object contains templates of infrastructure machine and bootstrap config object. And uh, the, those templates will be used to create those uh, objects. And uh, an infrastructure machine object represents a machine on the specific infrastructure. It contains information for the controller to request a machine from the specific infrastructure, and then provisioning and bootstrapping it into a Kubernetes node. The bootstrap part information is actually from a secret generated from the bootstrap config object. Okay, the bootstrap config object contains information about how to bootstrap a server into Kubernetes node, usually through cloud init. And the secret storing those data will be generated and referred by the infrastructure uh, machine object. And the last uh, is the machine object. It contains the references to the infrastructure machine object and the bootstrap config object. And also it, has the, uh, uh, it knows the name of the cluster which it belongs to. And uh, there are many other CRDs defined in this architecture, but to create a, a Kubernetes control plan, we mainly need three objects, uh, the cluster, infrastructure cluster, and the control plan object. Uh, after the three objects are ready, the control plan provider will start to create the inf infrastructure machine object and the bootstrap config object, and then create a machine object which has reference to uh, the previous two objects. And after that, the machine controller will set on the reference to the infrastructure machine and the bootstrap config object to uh, notify that, to notify each provider that these objects are consumed by uh, some machine. And then the bootstrap provider will know, okay, I need to generate bootstrap data for that machine and the infrastructure uh, machine uh, controller will know, uh, start to use those data and request a machine and bootstrap that machine to a Kubernetes node. Uh, here are the sample uh, implementation implemented by uh, the cluster API community, which are using kubeadm to uh, bootstrap a machine. And uh, when creating uh, worker nodes, cluster API has defined another two CRDs, machine deployment and machine set. 
uh, their logic is familiar with the uh, control plan provider. And the, re the relationship between them is just like port uh, replica set and the deployment in Kubernetes. So uh, next is about uh, MetaCube DIO. Again, MetaCube DIO is a bare metal provisioning tool for Kubernetes and also is an infrastructure provider for cluster API. There are two main components in MetaCubed. Uh, uh, cluster API provider MetaCubed, or we can call it a CapM3, and the bare metal operator. The CapM3 is the infrastructure provider and the bare metal operator is the bare metal provisioning tool. And the CRD defined by them are actually MetaCubed cluster and MetaCubed machine and the bare metal host. A bare metal host object represents a bare metal server. It contains information such as BMC details, uh, boot mode, OS image, OS image, uh, user data, and so on. Uh, bare metal operator will use this data to access the bare metal servers, control the power, and do the provisioning work. Now to use the uh, MetaCube along with Cluster API, we first need to create bare metal host objects for each bare metal servers. These bare metal host objects are the server inventory ready for provisioning Cluster API machines. Then we need to create a Cluster API object that will generate machines for us. Here I use machine set for the example. And uh, also, we need to create related MetaCube machine template and the MetaCube data template object. The MetaCube machine template is used to generate a MetaCube machine, which is a consumer of the bare host object. And the MetaCube data template is used to generate uh, network data and the metadata used for cloud init for uh, when provisioning our uh, bare metal server. And like uh, we talked before, the machine set controller will use the, those templates to create a, a MetaCube machine and a CubeADM config uh, object. And also, uh, after that, uh, a machine object will be created and uh, referring to the previous object, two objects. Then the machine controller set on the reference and uh, each provider will start to uh, started the provisioning work, which is generating the secret uh, secrets that storing uh, our bootstrap data. And uh, after all the secrets are ready, the MetaCube machine controller will choose a suitable bare host, set part of its spec, including image and the reference for user data, metadata, and the network data, and also the consumer. And next, the bare metal operator will detect those changes and uh, start the provisioning work using this data. Uh, about, about provisioning, the uh, bare metal operator uses uh, OpenStack Ironic project as the backend. There is an uh, Ironic server running along with the bare metal operator, accepting requests from the bare metal operator and it will access to the bare metal server, change the boot option and power on the server through its BMC, start a RAM disk and runs an agent called Ironic Python Agent, or EPA. Uh, and then the EPA will uh, talk with Ironic, inspect hardware and write data to the hardware uh, disk. Okay, this is the provisioning workflow. It shows how uh, the image is written to the server when uh, using Pixie Boot, and after write after uh, written to the disk, uh, the server will uh, reboot. And uh, if we set the correct bootstrap data, then a Kubernetes node will uh, be in initiated. Okay, the last one is clustered or scalar. It can adjust the size of a Kubernetes cluster according to its workload. Uh, to implement this. The core mechanism and uh, idea it uses is node group. Uh, 
A node group is a set of nodes, uh, nodes that have the same capacity and a set of labels. The cluster or the scalar defines an interface, also called a node group, to control a node group. Though, uh, this interface has methods like uh, increase size or delete nodes, and so on. And uh, it is implemented by each cloud provider. And the cluster API is one of them. And uh, the cluster scaler will check the ports deployed on the target cluster periodically. If there exists a pod whose status is pending because of lacking resources, the cluster scaler will then choose a node group and calculate uh, if scaling up that node group, whether the new node could host uh, the pending pods or not. If so, uh, how many new nodes are needed? And after the calculation, a cluster scaler will call uh, increase size method to scale up that node group. And uh, a request will be sent to uh, the related cloud and the new machines will be created and put into uh, Kubernetes nodes. Scaling down is smir uh, similar with uh, this logic. Uh, the cluster scaler checks the resources usage of each node uh, to see uh, if there are nodes that are not needed anymore. If it exists, it will start scaling down by calling the delete nodes method. Cluster, uh, okay, cluster API is one of the cloud provider. So if you're using cluster API, a node group is actually a machine set or machine deployment object. And the scaling job is done by changing uh, the replics field in their spec. Now, uh, because the autoscaler needs to not only check ports running on the workload cluster, but also uh, modifying a machine set or machine deployment on the management cluster, so the cluster autoscaler needs to uh, needs, needs access to both of the two clusters. Okay, the next part is about how to use the three projects. Uh, Cluster API community created a, a tool called Cluster Cartel, uh, which can deploy related CRDs and uh, controllers, and also generate uh, YAML files for uh, objects like cluster. We can use Cluster Cartel uh, init command to create a Cluster API core components and uh, uh, each provider. To deploy a Bermetal operator and Ironic, the MetaCube uh, community provides a script, uh, deploy.sh. This script can deploy Bermetal operator and uh, Ironic in cluster as a pod. And we can also deploy Ironic outside of the cluster using another script, uh, run local Ironic.sh. But to run both of them, there are some ver uh, variables need to be configured. Here are uh, part of them. And uh, if using uh, deployed dot uh, sh, uh, the, these variables are defined through one of these two files. And uh, for run local ironic dot sh, uh, they are defined through system uh, environment, or we can use default values defined in the script itself. Okay, after all the components are ready, we just need to create objects. Uh, they are cluster, kubeadm uh, control plan, machine deployment, uh, kubeadm uh, kube config template, and uh, metacube cluster, metacube machine template, metacube data template, and also by meta hosts. Now, uh, and uh, with all the needed objects created, the provision job will start automatically. About a uh, cluster autoscaler, it can be deployed using Helm, and uh, the chart can be downloaded from the Git, uh, from GitHub. And uh, when installing, we also need to set some specific variables to uh, specify cluster API as the cloud provider, and also specify how the cluster autoscaler could access to uh, workload cluster and uh, management cluster. The cluster API mode here 
defines the, how the uh, cluster of scalar could access to the clusters. And uh, in this example, I am using cube, uh, cube config in cluster mode, which means the cluster, uh, the autoscaler will run in the management cluster and uh, use cube config to talk to the workload cluster and use in cluster authentication to access the management cluster. And uh, the cube config for workload cluster is specified through cluster API cube config secret. The value is the name of the secret stored in the management cluster. Uh, to control which machine sets or machine deployments should be scaled, we ne need to add these two annotations to those target objects. The cluster scaler will monitor any machine set or machine deployment uh, that contains both of these two annotations. Okay, finally, the demo part. In the demo, I will first create a one master, one worker uh, cluster using two bare servers, and then scaled up that cluster. Uh, this image shows the network of the entire, uh, entire environment. We, uh, the management cluster need to uh, access to uh, the BMC and also access to provisioning network, which is, uh, which are, uh, which is uh, uh, in which ironic runs, and also the bare metal network, which is uh, in which the Kubernetes run, uh, the workload cluster Kubernetes runs. Okay. Well, because the, I'm using bare metal and the provisioning of a bare metal server is very uh, time consuming, so actually this is a video record. And uh, and uh, and I have already created uh, all the components. You can see here the Capi, in Capi, uh, Capi system uh, namespace. There are a cluster API controller manager, and uh, there are uh, there there exists a Kubeadm controller plan uh, control plan uh, controller and Kubeadm bootstrap controller and also CapM3 controller manager and uh, Bermet operator and Ironic. And I have created three Bermet hosts. They, their state is uh, available. And if, uh, I, if, you, I, if I <coughs> get in the detail of the Bermet host, you can find the hardware information in their status. For example, here, the leaks and the CPU and the storage. And uh, the next, we need to create our control cluster and the control plan. The first is uh, the cluster uh, object. It looks like this. It has cluster network, uh, inter-cluster network uh, configuration and uh, control plan reference and uh, infrastructure reference. And the next is the Kubeadm control plan uh, object. Well, it's a very, it's a <laughs> little long. And uh, you can see here we, uh, we have a infrastructure reference to a MetaCube machine template that will be used to generate a MetaCube machine object. And also we have template for, uh, uh, for bootstrap data and it is in the format of cloud init. We have, I have defined a lot of commands to run and also a lot of files to uh, be created in the server. Okay, the next one is the machine, uh, MetaCube machine template. And uh, in the template we have uh, the data template to use to generate uh, to use to generate the network data and uh, metadata, and also the image information for the server. And as you can see here, the here are the uh, MetaCube data template, and it contains information about uh, metadata and the network data. And the last one is MetaCube cluster. Uh, 
it only contains the control plane endpoint and also a a bool value indicated that we uh, our cluster has no uh, cloud provider and uh, after created the, uh, those objects all can we can get the cluster that says the phase is provisioning and uh, because they are uh, uh, the controller is checking uh, whether the infrastructure cluster is ready or not and uh, if we get cubidium control plan object here there are nothing in it that because the cluster is not provisioned yet and uh, a few minutes later a few seconds later okay the because the metal cube cluster our infrastructure is ready now so the cluster is going to the provisioned phase and uh, we can see the cubidium control plan has replicas one and uh, updated one and uh, and uh, it is unavailable so it is in the initialized phase and initializing phase and we can see uh, a new machine is created and in the provisioning phase and the metal cube machine is also be created about 30 uh, seconds ago <coughs> and uh, bare metal host uh, one of the bare metal host is chosen and it is provisioning and uh, the power is online and uh, the consumer is our metacube machine object and almost uh, after 15 minutes in my environment the data the OS image will be written into the the metal host the uh, metal host so the state yeah here the state after 15 minutes the state of the bermet host is uh, provisioned which means the data uh, all the data has been written to the uh, server and uh, and it uh, but but if we get the medical machine uh, <coughs> it says not ready not because uh, the server get rebooted and uh, the all the command is running now and the Kubernetes is not uh, up yet and after another two almost uh, another two minutes okay here uh, can see another two minutes after another two minutes the machine has a provider ID set and the phase is running and uh, the MetaCube machine also has the same provider ID and the red is true the provider ID is generated by MetaCube uh, automatically and uh, the and will be co are copied to the machine object and if that is and if that provider ID is set the machine will consumed, uh, be considered as running and ready and uh, we can see here the control plane is now initialized and the API server available and now we can access to our server to get and we can get a node and also the kubeconfig for our workload cluster is stored in the management cluster as a secret so the my cluster kubeconfig we can get this use this to access our cluster okay I have stored the kubeconfig and uh, get node and also get pod now the next is uh, I need to create a, a machine deployment to create our uh, uh, create a worker for our cluster the machine deployment uh, has the bootstrap template to create a bootstrap config and a template to create a machine uh, medical machine okay the there are uh, similar ways that, so I was uh, similar ways in the control plan so I skip this and uh, after these objects are created and uh, <coughs> here the machine deployment is in scaling up phase and a new 
machine is created and a new metacube machine is created also. And after another two, okay, the machine object has a ref has a reference to the bootstrap config and uh, metacube machine object. And after another two, and uh, yeah, and uh, a new another BMH has been chosen and it is in provisioning phase. Okay, after another two, 20 minutes, it will become worker well ready. Okay, the worker is ready now. And uh, they have provided ID set and the machine deployment is in running phase. And uh, our get node, there are two nodes in our workload cluster. And the next I will use this uh, uh, script to create autoscaler. Okay, the autoscaler is created. And uh, you can see here the pod is running. And uh, to trigger the scaling up, I need to ensure that our machine deployment has the right annotations here. Okay. And uh, now, next, uh, to trigger the scaling up, I uh, will create a deployment. The deployment, uh, the pod deployed by this deployment does nothing but request for four CPU cores. And because the worker has uh, 20 CPUs, so, okay, the pod is running. And so if we, if I add this to six, and there will be one pod in pending status, in pending phase. Okay, so here, there are a pod, there are a pending pod in the workload cluster. And uh, I can see the machine deployment is in scaling up uh, again, and a new machine is created, and uh, the last uh, Bermuda host is chosen for provisioning. Okay, that's all. Okay, the last is some uh, information about the community. Thank you all. <coughs>